Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for another Monday this and that video. And for those who are new, these are simply the kind of videos where I can give you some updates on things going on. I talk about several different topics, sometimes answering questions from previous videos throughout the week, and then whatever else I just feel like talking about. So let's get to the topics of today. So the first thing I actually wanna talk about is I finally got brave and took my the pumpkin cookie recipe. It's not my recipe per se, but I do have a video out on it, which also has a link to the recipe. And I think I might have even shared on Patreon some of the tweaks that I make to the recipe when I make it myself. Because like I do with most things, if I use somebody's recipe, which is rare, I usually take it and tailor it to suit us and what I think is best, you know, according to flavor and so on. Well, a lot of you know that we have friends that um, we tend to have dinner with at least once a month and they came over for Thanksgiving dinner and a good part of that family has to be gluten free. And so I finally got brave and decided to try making my pumpkin cookies gluten free and was very happy with the results. But in this case, I did do a little searching online to find what is the best basic gluten free flour ratios in order to make good cookies. And one of the recipes I found seemed to be perfect and everybody loved the cookies, whether they were gluten free or not. She had a specific recipe that equaled six cups of flour when she was done. And so what I did was I came, I wrote it out in parts so you can tailor it to get the amount of flour that you want if you want more or less. And in this case, I didn't need six cups. And I didn't want to make that much right away until I knew for sure it was going to be a good one for making cookies and so on. Otherwise, I would have went ahead and made the six cups and then just saved the flour for making another batch of cookies later. So anyway, the, the ratios go like this. Six parts of rice flour. Now that can be brown or white rice and in this case, what I did is I did half and half. I did half white rice, half brown rice flour, simply because I had both of them. Uh, then two parts potato starch, not potato flour, potato starch. In this case, when you're talking uh, starch or flour, there is a difference between the two. But when you're talking about tapioca starch or tapioca flour, those terms are used interchangeably and it's the same thing. So then you'd have one part of the tapioca or arrowroot starch. And I used arrowroot in this case. Either one will work equally as well. So when I went to make this three cups of flour, even though I only needed two and a half, I was having a hard time really breaking it down because of how the recipe was written. I used one cup of brown rice flour, one cup of white rice flour, two thirds of a cup of potato starch and one third of a cup of the arrowroot starch. And then what I did was after I got that mixed up, it equaled three cups. I then just took a half cup of that out so I could have my two and a half cups for the cookies and then just put it in a jar and set it aside. And then the very next morning I made pancakes. I added other flour to it just to increase it up to a cup and then made some pumpkin spice pancakes out of that using my pumpkin powder, which is the same thing I used to make the cookies. And you can see here, you know, when you you rehydrate that pumpkin powder, you can make it like almost like it's a fresh puree. So I make it into the puree before I add it to the cookie mixture. That's the best way to do it. So anyway, I was very happy with how that turned out and I will certainly be doing that again. So the next time that we get together with them, my plan is to make some of my cowboy cookie recipe, which I'll link to that down below as well. And, it, and that's a real popular one. And I'm gonna use the same flour mixture to make those. And while I'm talking about it, let's come back to that homemade baking powder again. So I messed up in last week's video and for some reason I had it in my head that the ratio of baking soda to cream of tartar was one in one. And I think I was just getting myself confused with other recipes I have out involving baking soda that are a one to one ratio, such as my cleaning powder. Well, somebody said, oh, I used a different ratio. And I went back and looked at my, my original video where I talked about it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I messed up. It's two parts 
cream of tartar to one part baking soda. However, when I made the pumpkin cookies, because the recipe called for a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda, well, you already got the baking soda and the baking powder anyway. So what I did in that case is I did use a one-to-one -one ratio. I used a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of the cream of tartar, and it turned out great. They were nice and fluffy, loved them. And again, just very happy with how that turned out. So I'm gonna be, I'm getting, now that I'm getting braver again, I'm getting gonna be getting back into doing more gluten-free recipes. But anyway, I'll also be doing a separate video just so I can have it aside to link people back to, again, on the baking powder and the best way to make it and to use it, including whether or not you wanna make it ahead of time, make a bigger batch and add some kind of starch to it because that will help prevent the clumping. That's why they use aluminum when they make baking powder is because it's a drying agent, which prevents clumping. So if you have to buy your baking powder, look for one that's aluminum free. Otherwise, it's cheaper to make your own or just add it as you need it without even mixing it. All right, so a couple other things. So you might have seen my video that came out this last week, last Wednesday, on where I did the tour of my kitchen. But when that video was shot, because it was shot about three weeks ago, it was before we got the border paper up. So Patrick did, when he got home from his hunting trip, one of the first things he did was put my border paper up, and it's beautiful. I know some people will say, well, isn't that so two decades ago? But you know what? My son bought me this border paper and he'd asked about it a couple times, when are you ever gonna get that border paper up? Kept telling him, well, we're waiting until we finish the upper part of the kitchen and get everything repainted before putting the border paper up. Otherwise, it'd be a waste. Wanna have a nice fresh coat of paint. So we got that done and got the border paper up. So you saw the video, you wouldn't have seen it with the border paper. So I did in the community section post a couple of pictures, but I'll put a couple of pictures here so you can see it with the border paper up. I am so thrilled. I am just love it. As soon as I he started putting that up, I just gasped at how beautiful it was. Even though I've been looking at the border paper in the package for about 15 years, it was just a huge difference seeing it put in place and how it tied everything together. The ivy, the green on the countertop, and so on. And even the new addition back here where we put that stick on uh, stuff behind the stove here. So very pleased with that. And if you haven't seen the video, you wanna see a full tour of my kitchen. It was the first time in six years I've ever done a full tour, even though we've had the bottom cabinets done for many years. But this time I gave, well, mostly a full tour, but I showed, you know, how some of the, some of the different cool features that Patrick did when he built these cabinets from scratch. So that'll be linked in the description box down below. So if you saw the cheese video, the dehydrating cheese video that just published on Friday, I did finally get myself a rotary treat cheese grater. And this is a vintage one. I'm not really sure what year this is from. I'm thinking maybe the 1950s. There were more and I was having a hard time deciding. But I went ahead and went with this. And the reason I went with vintage is because every single one I tried to find online, I was trying to at least see if I could find one that was all stainless steel but every one I could find that was all entirely stainless steel wasn't the style I wanted or it didn't have good reviews and I, I was just not really happy at the way it looked like it went together. And all the other ones were all mostly plastic with only the stainless steel blades and that was so frustrating. I want something that's gonna hold up and last. And so I went vintage and so I got this and though it's, no, it's not all stainless steel, it is all metal and rather than being all plastic. And it does attach to the counter this way, the way most of your vintage type things like this work. I like the suction better because you can put it anywhere, but these are typically more sturdy anyway. And so, and this is just a grater, and that was all I cared about. You can get some that have, your newer models tend to have other blades that do slice real thin and so on. But anyway, you just, you put your cheese or whatever it is you're grating in there, and then you use this to press down on it until you get it all grated up. No grating your fingers, and you, you got your handle, and you just crank it. So I'm really happy. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm happy to have this. And down the road, I'll do a video on that and how well it works once I once I use it to grate with. So anyway, if I part of the reason I brought that up is if you're if you're looking for something specific and you cannot find it that's not entirely made out of plastic or entirely made in China, then. Do a search on places like eBay and see if you can find vintage of those items because 
things like the apple slicers that um, we kind of thought P Pampered Chef was the first one place to come out with that apple slicers where you, the rotary thing. And no, those have been out for at least 100 years, I'm thinking. Those have been out for a long time. Those are old. <laughs> They've been out forever. But it's one of those things we just got away from. And so you can find all kinds of vintage coffee grinders, apple slicers and cores and so much more. And you, you're going to get a better product even if it's used. Just pay close attention to the photos that they give you. I chose this one over the other ones I was looking at, though I really liked those. They were from the 1940s. The only thing I didn't like them is the barrel with the grater had a seam on it where this barrel is totally seamless. It, so it doesn't have a seam going across. Now, a couple more things is uh, a lot of you know I have this series of videos I've been putting together for the last year or two about natural remedies lists. I'll have videos on specific individual herbs and their benefits. And then, and then that's a long playlist I've been working on for over six years. And then I have videos that are on recipes for medicinal things, such as the pain remedy extract, which I'll link to that down below. But then I have a separate playlist that's on natural remedies for specific things where I compile lots of different foods, herbs, and more that can help with various ailments or just to give your health a boost. You know, whether it be trying to help with hair growth, helping with diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, thyroid function, and menopause. Well, I recently had a comment come in on that menopause video where someone said that trying was trying to convince me that by not going on hormone replacement when you go into menopause, it's going to cause you to get Alzheimer's and dementia. Well, I, I have to beg to differ because we were made to have our cycle stop at a certain time so that we're not constantly being exposed to estrogen for our entire life. If we were meant to constantly have a estrogen for the rest of our life clear up until we die we would have been made that way but we're not there's a reason why we need to stop producing estrogen because long-term exposure to estrogen is what increases the breast cancer risk especially if you're taking it artificially and the body's not producing it itself before they had hormone replacement therapy ladies weren't suddenly becoming uh, getting dementia and Alzheimer's because they stopped having their cycle and stopped producing estrogen. And they didn't have all the symptoms that we have today. And I will link specifically to that video down below for ladies that are my age that have been, that are starting to go into menopause or like me have been in it for like seven years or so. No hormone replacement here. And very, very, very mild symptoms, the occasional hot flashes, and those are usually easily dealt with. They're pretty mild on my end. But the things that are causing Alzheimer's and dementia and why we're seeing an increase has nothing to do with people pulling away from taking hormone replacement, but it has much to do with the constant exposure to aluminum, whether it be in your baking powders, the aluminum pans you cook and bake with, the aluminum in the air and many other sources, or found in certain pharmaceuticals, but it, whether it be something you're injecting into yourself or you're taking on a prescription basis. Those are the things that are causing Alzheimer's and dementia. I gotta say it because I think too many people are being duped and so they keep doing this stuff and what happens, they keep getting sicker and sicker. I saw this happen to my mother and eventually it was what took her life. Is she trusted her doctor, she believed everything, she took everything they gave her and it made her worse. And at one time they had her on so many antidepressants, not because she was depressed, but for pain management. They had her on at least four at one time. And she did resemble all the signs of somebody who was in the late stage dementia. And once, and I begged her to ask the doctors to, about these medications to get and to get them reduced. And once they started taking her off that stuff, she was normal again. I could actually talk to her again and she knew it, you, know, you understood what she was saying and she understood what you were saying instead of some of the crazy things that she was saying there for a while. That was all from those pharmaceuticals she was on. But at any rate, I wanted to put that out there because I think it's important information. So I'm gonna link to the a, a recent video I did on the cost of being healthy and 
why it might be costly initially trying to get off of certain medications, but if you do it right in the long run, you're saving yourself money. And then the last thing is I want to talk about is the collaborations. We have two different collaborations going on and I keep forgetting to bring up the quilt one because I haven't had any new squares show up in a while and I'm sure it's because of the holidays and different things. People are caught up doing other stuff. That's fine. I think I need about 10 more quilt squares to be able to finish the rain country a crazy quilt collaboration where I'm going to put together a quilt made from all the squares that people send me. 10 inch square, 10 inch completed squares, front and back, fully quilted, lined, all that, and 10 inches. I don't want to have to cut anything off of it or to try to make it bigger to fit into the quilt. So make sure you get the dimensions right. And then once you get that completed, just send it to my post office box. The address is always in the description box down below and I'll also put it right here. And then the other one that costs you absolutely nothing but the time to take some photos and send to me is the recipe collaboration. I still only ha now have six entries into this. This one's been taken longer. Maybe it's for the same reason people are focused on holidays. But with all the great holiday cooking, if you're making anything based off of my recipe videos, please take a photo of that. Again, it has to be based at least off my recipe videos or even written recipes that I put out there and then whatever tweaks you want to make to it to suit you and then take some images and then email those to me. I know somebody has sent me pictures of the pumpkin cookies. The chocolate sauce was one of the most recent ones. I think one was uh, enchiladas, homemade enchiladas and some other things. And appreciate, thank you for those who, sent, who sent your photos in so far. And I'm saying entries. It's not... <laughs> I'm just it's just that I'm only taking three up to three photos per person so if you send me more than three I'm gonna I'm gonna pick and choose the best ones out of the, the ones that look the nicest so make sure you're taking good quality photos you want them really to look nice so that the the things that you're making really pop but I'm loving these collaborations they're a lot of fun and if you're interested in seeing what the previous ones we've done I've I think I have three out so far. I'll put the link to the full playlist in the description box down below and then be thinking ahead because the next one is going to be the homemade medicinals, whatever I'm calling it, a uh, collaboration where maybe you're making a pain extract or some elderberry spice syrup or something inspired by my videos. That will be for the, and you can start sending those photos now. I already have a folder ready to drop those into. So rainkountryhomestead at gmail.com. That's where you'll send those photos. And make sure you title the email recipe collaboration or medicinal collaboration so I know which one to drop it into. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.